Another edition of Monday Night Football, we like to call it here on the Mexican Soccer Show, is about to start. Grab your drink. I would say grab your micheladas. I think that's a common drink in the summer. It's a common drink all the time. But I feel like I think Clamato sales go up in the summer because I think everybody tends to that. Uh, not endorsing Clamato in any way, by the way. All right, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. I am Weasel from Food Mex Nation. This is an hour-long podcast dedicated to all things Mexican football with the emphasis on Liga MX. Ng, as we like to call it, Liga MX English. This is that we language that we speak. Uh, we're going to just jump right in. Welcome, everyone. And uh, let's jump in with the hot topic. Everyone went crazy. And let's just start one word to describe Diego Linus, the wonder kid from America. We've been seeing for uh, at least a year, if everybody's been kind of following. Cesar, he scored two golazos on yeah. uh, Saturday. One word to describe him. Uh, capable. I think he's just a capable player. I think it's not even someone who is. I guess you got. You can use the word promising. You can use the word talented. That there's a. He's a star in the making. But I think he's just capable. I think that you've seen what he's done not only with Global Medica recently, but what he's done the two alone tournament too, where he was he was voted as the MVP of the tournament when, with a tournament that had a bunch of 20 and 21 year olds, and he was able to get that MVP like nomination out on his 18th birthday. So just a capable player and someone who you just wonder what his next step is going to be. All right, capable. That's a great word. You know, yeah. yeah. It's like you you kind of want to go with promising, but I think there's a promise and there's yeah. potential. Yeah. But I like, I like the I, I like the the word. All right, Adriana, we'll go to you. Uh, one word to describe Mr. Diego. I'd say hope. I'd say it's um it's good to see a young, a really young Mexican national team player. Um, he didn't have a really good uh. Well, the very good San Juegos Centroamericanos. That was kind of um, the down point. But now just seeing that there is talent in that division, that there is young players that can start fight for fighting for a t uh, starting position in the Liga MX, I think it just gives us a little bit of hope. And also seeing as though it's one of these positions that we're kind of struggling for for, uh, for the next World Cup. So I'm I'm kind of hopeful of what he'll do with the Liga MX and just get other coaches to try to bring out their own new uh, star players and somehow help the, the Mexican national team on the long run. Definitely. I mean, it's sometimes people are like, you know, we can't we can't believe this is happening. I think we don't see that very often with such young players. And when we do see some young players, they kind of fade off, you know, what happens. So I think everyone's a little bit uh, at least, you know, kind of hesitant to say something big, but it is Mexican uh, soccer. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. It, go ahead. Go ahead. Susan. I was going to say it is interesting that like uh, I think with a lot of young players like that, we're wondering, it's like, all right, let's not force them too much. Let's see what happens. It looked like that's what Bioko was doing for a little bit with him in the last couple seasons where he was still keeping him on the bench, wasn't really giving him as many starts as uh, uh, La Volpe when La Volpe was in charge. But, uh, but I think even La Volpe, if I remember correctly, earlier this year, he was saying that, that Linus has nothing to learn by training with the U-20s. But at this point, he's ready mm -hmm. for the first division. He's, for, he's ready for, I mean, give him another year or so, maybe ready for another move perhaps abroad too you don't want to look too far ahead but i, I think i agree i think i 100 percent agree that this isn't the kind of guy that i i, I know you got to be careful with a lot of players you got to be patient but i think he is a player who's not only ready for the first division but just ready for a bigger role with club america so hopefully we'll see that within the at least within this season oh, definitely let's hear what the responses from the uh, from from our mexican soccer show twitter account uh, we got from Nogozulu Matondo. I have no idea if I said that correctly, or but Silky. Um, Silky. <laughs> there, Edwin, <laughs> Edwin, our friend Edwin Garcia always tweets at the show. Uh, definitely a friend of the show. Pressure. You know, here comes the pressure. Uh, Sergio Tristan, uh, future. Our very own uh, Cari Torres, who's uh, been on the show, uh, mesmerizing, starting in the woo there. Um, hot dog champ. Oh, that's a fantastic name. <laughs> hot dog champ. We're gonna give you. We're gonna give you definitely props for the name. There goes a little bit and says not one word, but it's 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 good to read it. Here comes all the overhyping of a young Mexican player. Oh, hot dog uh, champ. I uh, expected more from you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mexican for J for JG twenty four. You know the. Uh, 
Teodoro Canales says Jurgen. Jurgen, damn. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that hurts. Uh, promising from Abel Salazar. And then Senor Bautista uh, says who? And Javier Valencia <laughs> at the other end. There's who at the other end. Goat, greatest of all time. All right. It, it kind of goes along with, uh, with how... Uh, the fans are, and, and I know some of you are joking, but there's our question of the day. I didn't really get to answer um because I was thinking of promising, but he's already there. Um, I guess I'll put real. Like that's yeah. you know, it's I think it's the real yeah. deal. And we're gonna talk a little bit more on the Arme on our America segment about Diego Linus, but it's good to hear already start. We've been talking about Diego Linus in a uh, Linus in a long, uh, you know, since last year. We've seen what he was doing. And then Laborte brought him up how how young he was. He is. 18, right? Officially, yeah, turned 18 yeah, last month. Yep. Summer, mm -hmm. yeah, so he's, yeah, so I mean, barely 18 years old. And gola, those goals, they weren't, I mean, there were two great goals. Um, how the confidence that he had, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But, um, Mexican soccer show, thanks to everybody already on the chat and uh, that is already saying hello. We had some, a couple of mic problems, I think they were telling us, but I think they're fixed by now. I think, um, but we should be good now. But saying hello to MV23, who also joined in on the chat right now, said young. Uh, Luis Martinez saying hello. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll continue to read your chat. If you're listening to us live, thank you right here on the live show. If you're not, uh, we did get some responses from a few weeks ago on the iTunes. Again, if you're listening to us, thank you to everyone who, who uh, said your hellos? I know some of you guys lis were listening to it on your TV, we, the YouTube. It was pretty cool to see a living room with with the Mexican soccer show. That's I showed my mom that. She was proud. She was proud. Um, <laughs> oh, I should show my mom too. That's a good should. idea. If somebody's should... watching us on, the, on TV. Thank you. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, so what have you been doing with your life? Oh, uh, I want you to see this podcast I'm working on, Mom. Check it I know, out. I know I, I know I studied psychology, and you thought I was become a psychiatrist. But check out these reviews on Let's iTunes. on TV. Ta, ta, ta. <laughs> um, so it was, it was pretty cool. I made my night, so thank you. Thank you for that. But at the same time, thank, uh, thank you for all of you guys that, that tweeted and, and keep uh, keep us here. Um, all right, so what are we talking about today? Liga MX Spicy Week. Uh, that's one way to describe it. Uh, always, always some drama, something going on. If it's not, you know, uh, if it's refs, if it's fights, if it's something off the field. And, of course, we had some great, great, great games. And we, we'll talk all about that in the top three. I will discuss for next week. We'll also dive into um, Mexicans abroad. A couple of the um, guys in Europe scored uh, some goals in the preseason. And here comes the... The new season for all of them. We're still waiting on some either transfer news or, or thing that's going up. We're going to update you on Ochoa. Big news today. Uh, Italy, Napoli. Um, and uh, then it will give us a little bit of a heads up. It's not final yet. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to round off uh, with some uh, Women's uh, World Cup. Their sub-20, their World Cup. And uh, Mexico beating Brazil. Lots, lots, lots of people. Uh, very excited about these uh, the ladies that are coming up, uh, especially when we just got done with the Centro Americanos in Barranquilla. Now we have the sub-20 and looking forward to uh, the World Cup next year and then qualifiers at the end of, of this year. So lots and lots to talk about Liga MX. As far as El Tri, no big news. Everyone, I think it's going to be a while. I mean, Tuca said no. Um, everyone's making a big deal because Bielsa's game was today and, he, you know, they lead one. So Bielsa is going to be on the radar regardless. Um, people can continue to talk about it. So there's nothing really new on the on, on the Mexican national team. And I don't think it's going to be there for a while. All we know is that Juan Carlos is definitely out. We're quite desperate, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, but yeah. I, like I said, I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's going to be a while. I really do think, I mean, what I don't even, I don't think we're going to, I'm kind of figuring out, well, we have two games coming up in September. Yeah. Yeah. So, in turn, we have like a couple of weeks before things get kind of like, I don't know, people get kind of anx anxious and just, I, don't know. I honestly believe Make a wrong gonna, decision. I honestly believe that they're they're going to bring somebody up for those two games, and um, Enrique Mesa, something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe give Rafa his official goodbye as as like a coach. <laughs> oh no, he can't come to the U.S. No, so it's definitely not. It's definitely. Yeah. I don't know. I guess finding a pickle. Coaching through an iPad, like yeah. hundred, <laughs> two hundred miles away. <laughs> Virtual uh, Rafa. Um, so we'll see. Well, I mean, I think they got to name somebody to at least come coach the team in the United States. Mexico plays Uruguay and Mexico plays uh, the United States. Yeah. Um, so they got to name someone to come up 
I, I, I don't know who, if it's not like everyone's that can need that can do it is, uh, is, is obviously in their teams. They're not going to just want to come take, you know, off two weeks to go to the Mexico to come play Mexico, uh, to coach Mexico. So I'm kind of surprised they haven't named somebody already as an interim. Um, yeah, no, I'm also I'm also interested in that as well. Because would it be someone? Because I feel like no one's even talked about who that interim name is. I mean, yes. we've talked about the we've talked about the potential, and everyone was talking about that right after Asolio made it official. But everyone talked about like, oh, who could be the guy who would replace him? Who would be the person who would be replacing Asolio? But no one's really had that discussion. Of, like, who would that interim be? I mean, it could be potential. I mean, I I'm thinking of someone who's had some involvement in the youth teams. I guess it'd be like Botro Gutierrez. But he's doing. He's working right now with like Univision right now, isn't he? I feel like I saw him like doing some sort of like commentary work. But I'm sure maybe he would leave for like a short amount of time. But I don't know. I don't, I don't even good, know. If... That's actually a good point. I think maybe yeah. somebody within the federation that's already coaching some. Team. Or who's already done some work in the past, like with the federation? Yeah. Are there, that, uh, the any 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 even thoughts um, on who would come in be an interim, or do you think they're going to name somebody right away? I, I don't think. I don't think they dare to put someone that's with the youth teams because um, that's probably what they fear the most is that they don't have any experience with, with all the senior level players and all that little, like the, the chit chat in the locker rooms and all these egos. So I think they'll have a tough time with that. So I'm pretty sure if they had to go for an interim, they'll go with someone that has some experience, at least in Liga Mekis level. So I'm guessing, yeah, maybe they'll go like with Enrique Mesa or something like that, or even ask Tuca to do it again. Cause he did it already. He wasn't a permanent coach. He was just like an interim coach. Um, just before they got Miguel Herrera, so maybe he'll just do it like for a couple of games or. Um, but take away that's the thing taking really taking away from the team though. I mean, the last time they did it in the yeah. summer because Tuca was free, but year this is the no, week. It, it, no, it, it it was I think it was September as well. It was the game before. Um, it was a game actually in Toluca, and it was the game uh, against the U.S. to go to the um, to the what was it the Confederations Cup. It was the, the Mexico as one of the Gold Cup champions, and then the U.S. as the other Gold Cup champion. That's, and then they, they played each had, other. That, 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 they were, that there were two games. That's right. That's right. They are, he also played yeah. against Argentina, in uh, yeah, that was the other Dallas, one exactly. In Dallas, which is which is before, which is the first game that he had. Um, yeah. I don't remember if they were in season or not. I, for some reason, I have I have the recollection. Okay, Tuca could do it again. Yes, I'm. I'm but after, yeah, yeah I'm, well, after he, last he, week, he, like, he said I won't no, do but it. maybe. Yeah, but he, this is not a permanent coaching job. It's just like a please mm -hmm. help us job. So <laughs> again. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. Tuca was to do that again. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he was to. If, if he were to listen. There's not many options, though. <laughs> Chip yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, think people like him. <laughs> yeah. I think he probably has like the worst record, like the Poor worst guy. recent record as a Mexican national team coach. Yeah. yeah things didn't get any like, better. Yeah, he, he had like the worst, yeah. Things didn't get any better after the national team. He comes back for an interim. Oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> I mean, it'd be fun. I mean, here, here it would be a lot of fun. It'd be fascinating to follow that. And then, like, can you imagine if he ends up getting, like, two confident victories, what people would be saying after that? But I was, I don't know. <laughs> I was li literally had this conversation with, like, my taxi driver in Tijuana about Piojo. <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> last, last night. <laughs> Take taxis? Yeah, or just Uber, go with Rafa Puente Uber. and Leaño or something. Yeah. They, have, they have a crowd now. There's a following like now with all the young coaches. Any... Just give them a chance or something. Yeah. I feel like Torrado or something comes in. Guardado. <laughs> just... I, guess got, I guess they got seasons coming. All right, well, we'll see. What, what a mess, and we'll figure it out. I mean, those they got those two games, and I'm sure they're going to... Whoa, see, hopefully my computer doesn't fall off. Um, hopefully, the uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But interesting to see if they got to name somebody. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. All right, Liga MX. Um, Cari saying Matosas for for two games. Um, we all liked Matosa. That's I, a good yeah, name. Yeah. I like Matosa. That's from, a good name. To come. What is he doing right now? I don't. I, no, think, I, don't I think he was. Uh, he was coaching. Yeah, I think he had some problems with some owners over here. That's why he hasn't had another coaching job in Liga MX. That's what I heard. There was like this rumor that mm. I don't know his. His agent and something, you know how all those deals go and mm -hmm. they kind of ruin careers. I was hearing something about that. That's why he hasn't been really present in Liam X. All right, Cari with the uh, with the Matosa chat. All right, Liga MX. Let's jump right in. And uh, Cruz Azul. Uh, that was definitely the game of the week of last week. You know, Cruz Azul coming in beating Tigres one zero. Uh, Cesar. Yeah. I want to say it, but. Cruz Azul is looking like to be the real deal. No, they 
They really do. And I think we had to wait for a match like this to mm -hmm. really give him credit for something. I mean, obviously, you do have to remember that Torres Nilo basically gifted them that lone goal. I think that's something to keep uh, in mind. But at the same time, and that's, well, that, I guess that's what happens when you keep trying to play Torres Nilo as a central defender and not like what as a What happened to Torres Nilo? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I think you still have to give Cruz a lot of credit there. Defense continues to look very solid. You have someone uh, like Pablo Aguilar who's been fantastic for them so far this season, proving why he's one of the best defenders in the league. And then you really, I think one of the things that stood out to me, I sent out a tweet about this. Like, you look at that bench, and they have depth right right now, and, like, intimidating depth. I mean, look at the fact that Roberto Alvarado, he didn't start this game, he was on the bench. He got subbed in, and he scored. And then you had someone like I Igor and Lipnowski, who was able to be subbed in the 87th minute. He would easily be a starter in so many other Liga Mekis teams. And yet he was able to, like, like step back there and just really help them defensively. Maduena was substituted in the 92nd minute, too. Obviously, there's a lot more to, to Cruz Azul's strength right now than Cruz Azul doing well this season than them having good subs. But I think it's just a lot of things are working for the team, whether it be the new signings they made, whether it be how well they're doing defensively, whether it be that you have someone like Alvarado who gets up in the attack. I, I think they are the real deal. But of course, I mean, it's still early on the season. And let, let's see what happens. Even if they're to, to qualify as the number one seed at the very top of the league table, that still means... Very little in the Ligia. Anything can happen. But right now, they look they look like a Ligia team. I think you could say they look like a top four Ligia team. What really, really gets me is the fact that Cruz Azul is looking really great and Jason Markowitz is nowhere to be found. I know, right? Dude, they're going to win the title this season. I think that they're just waiting for Jason to leave, man. Jason. I don't know why. <laughs> if you're listening to us, that's what happens. I mean, wave, <laughs> wave, wave your Cruz Azul flag wherever you are. Oh, wherever you are. Uh, something else that happened that everyone keeps talking about, Adriana, uh, the drama that comes in, you know, um, Caixinha versus Nahuel at the press conference. What happened? What is this? This is telenovela that's wrapping up here in Liga MX outside of football. No, this is no drama, no Liga MX. This is just how it goes. It goes hand in hand every week. We've had it. <laughs> We're just getting used to this. This is what tele telenovelas are made out of. Um, so Caixinha goes out of the press conference. Um, Ricardo Ferretti is looking on. He's just waiting for his turn. And then all of a sudden, we have no idea why. None of them, uh, neither Caixinha nor Nahuel have said why, but something happened on the field. So as Nahuel was just walking by um, with, some of the, with some of the reporters that were, were there in the mix zone, he starts screaming at Caixinha and saying, um, bobo, irrespetuoso. He was just irrespectful. He was dumb. And then Caixinha, just trying not to play into this game, and just says, oh, yeah, have a good night. As they, I, I hope to see you soon. Have safe travel. And that was it. But obviously, Nahuel was screaming this while all the other reporters were looking into the conference and waiting for other players. We have no idea what went on. But today, Tuca, in, in a press conference, was asked what he thought about this because he didn't give a press conference afterwards. He was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to get fined. I don't care. I'll just go away. And he was asked about it, and he said, you guys only see half of the picture. You don't see what yeah. the other thing that happened. Why don't you guys ask what happened on the field? And that way you know if Caixinha was right or if Nahuel was actually being uh, disrespectful. So nobody asked um, Tuca if he knew what happened on the field. But apparently something happened uh, at the end of the match. Caixinha and Nahuel were talking or were screaming at each other or something. And that's why Nahuel um, took the opportunity to scream back at Caixinha while he was at the press conference at the Estadio Azteca. Because I think it's really easy for us to say, oh, it's just Nahuel being Nahuel. Look at him. It is, It is him being him. And, but at the same time, we, like... It is uh, a very Nahuel thing to do, yeah. But, we, but at the same time, like you said, like we don't know what happened beforehand. He didn't just say that just to say that. I, clearly, he, there was something that went on between those two. I don't know what happened right after the game ended. I mean, no one really knows exactly what was said between the two, what went on right there. But the only thing that we do see is just... Nahuel just being extremely rude during his press conference it was not actually pretty confusing because I've never actually been in the mix zone slash press conference in the Estadio Azteca. I thought that was it was almost too easy for Nahuel to like interrupt the press conference. Is the mix zone and like the press conference are they like in the same room? That's like that, yeah, that's, that's the, in the same room. It's like this huge tunnel, and the players go out from uh, yeah. and they go through the mix zone. They can just like walk by if they don't want to speak to anybody, mm -hmm. and then just like a corner right there, and like you, you can see the press conference. So all the players can listen to whoever's at the press conference, and whoever's at the press conference can easily shout back to whoever's at uh, like yeah. walking through the tunnel. Yeah, so she, it's it's practically the same room. It's like Chivas has like that. America, 
at, yeah. you know, have that when they have the three games too it's like right there you can go by yeah. and you can see the press conference yeah. too which is really good yeah. because yeah. you can kind of listen to what's happening and you're doing your interviews which yeah. never happens during a three game you got to pick one or the other <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah exactly um yeah. My, my only thing is is that if it was another player i'd be like hey what the heck happened Kaichinia? it's not well like and that that's yeah, what just kind of goes lose where credibility because he loses the, yeah. a lot of credibility yeah. Yeah, you can't even touch his post <laughs> and he gets all mad like yeah. he, he's yeah. a little bit too dramatic on the way that people talk to him, and he's he's out there. Um, and yeah, I'd still uh, like to know what happened, though. I, I'd still like to know like what 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 Kaixinha could have done to make him angry, just and Kaixinha yeah. too, or not whatever thing. Yeah, it's not like you know Kaixinha. It's, it's not Piojo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like, but he was pretty smart about it because he was like, oh yeah, he was actually smiling, saying, oh yeah, have a good night. And he, he actually told it extremely well. well. If you have something, yeah, he said, if you have something to say to me, you can just come over here and say it to my face. But he said in a really polite manner. He was like, "Okay, have a good trip. I'll see you mm. soon. Take care." Uh, and Nawel was really, really mad. Yeah, he oh, it didn't really like. He, he like it didn't phase him. I was actually pretty impressed with how Kachina dealt with that because I because like because yeah. uh, I because I didn't really hear about that until actually like, yesterday that I like looked up some videos and I was like, "Oh, maybe there's gonna be like some sort of fight." But no, like Kachina did dealt with that extremely well. But once again, that's the only thing that we've seen. Like Lucas said, we don't know the other end of it, what happened on the other side. So I wouldn't so what, be. So what the, it's like, you don't ask me, okay, well, what happened? Well, well, <laughs> well tell us what happened. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see what now. Maybe no one will say something. Maybe oh, no one will say something. No will definitely say yeah, something. Yeah. That guy's not going to stay quiet. Yeah. I think they'll say something eventually. The last guy I've seen yet this week in the press conference or on Thursday or Friday, he might say something. Well, we'll see what that. Uh, oh, obviously overshadows um, a good game in Cruz Azul beating Tigres and Tigres. Uh, there is, you know, it's it's not a surprise when Tigres not starting out like they should, and we have them to kind of look in in the scene forward and being that Tigres is is Tigres and all that they yeah. have. It's, it's kind and of also, we'll see that. And also, and also, Gignac was unavailable for this game, so I think that's something to keep in mind too. I mean, you obviously have an extremely and if I was talking about how good Cruz Azul's roster is, of course, everyone knows how good Tigres' roster is there. I mean, just the, the subs that they brought in, they brought in Eduardo Vargas, Quinones, Sosa. So that's just, they have they have an incredible team right there. But, but yeah, I think a big reason probably why they struggled there is no Gignac and no shots on target. I don't think they had a single shot on target in that game. Yeah, and actually Cruz Azul was actually, um, it was kind of doubtful how, they, how what they, the starting lineup would be because Milton Caraglio was out as well as, I think, on injury. Yeah. And one of the surprises on the bench was Santiago Jimenez, which everyone knows as Chaquito, which is the son of Cristian Jimenez. Mm -hmm. So he actually got his first call up to the Liga MX game. He didn't play, but he was uh, on the bench. So we might see him make his debut soon as well. Yeah, number one of those triple digit kids that uh, eventually you might see on the field <laughs> for, for Cruz Azul. He's actually, I think, a bit younger than Linus. So that would be pretty cool to see Cruz Azul oh, just step up and say, hey, you have Linus, I have Chaquito. <laughs> Nice, nice. I, I'd like to see that competition between all the young players in the different teams. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> That'd be awesome to see that. Stepping over to the, uh, I guess, we're gonna, we'll just jump into the other news of the weekend. We already kind of touched about it a little bit. Um, America. America coming back beats Pachuca 3-1. What is going on with Pachuca? But first of all, we'll continue the Diego uh, Linus hype um, in that... We've seen, at least we've seen before, youngsters. If, if I can think about, you know, youngsters 17 and 18 making a big deal in Liga MX before the Orleans, who do you think about? Like, what, I mean, within the last few years? Yeah, I think yeah, about like, it maybe, maybe the last time we saw someone like this. I mean, I would say it would be, I would think the best Chiofi, comparison would be... Trophies, school ball. Yeah, and, 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 and <laughs> I'm not saying that it resulted in good or bad, but, I mean, I, yeah, I think a trophies, which uh, at least continuing to do, you know, maybe not the the player that everybody thinks he was, but we know what trophies could do. We know he can't yeah. do. Cubo Torres, I could, th I, I don't know why I started thinking of Cubo Torres right away. And that Chivas right after Chicharito left, everyone was looking at him. Everyone's comparing it to him, how young he was. Well, he, he was the next Chicharito according to everyone. So I yeah. guess that's where the pressure came in, which was one of the words that someone on the chat said for, for Diego Linus. So yeah. He put pressure on him. I think, I think Linus is different though. I think he's clearly different in the same way that like that Chucky he was different, you know. I don't think he. I. I, I still have to be hesitant. Not saying he's be the same level as Chucky, but I think he's shown that he might have the potential to have the potential uh, that <laughs> Chucky has. I think that he once again, yeah, stepped up into a lone tournament. He stepped up for Club America, and he's still done a, a good job of impressing, even though he hasn't had that many minutes 
uh, under Piojo. Obviously, with La Volpe, he had a little bit more of a bigger role uh, than what he has with Piojo. But I, what I like about him over the weekend was that I think he played as if, especially with those two goals, as if he had a, a point to prove. Because I feel like he still has to win over Piojo. And I think he he hundred percent had to have done that. He hundred percent had to have. Done, if he didn't do that with the first goal, he did it with the second. I mean, credit to to Oribe uh, for basically creating like like fifty percent, sixty percent of that second goal. But I mean, but Linus, I mean, he, I, you got to give him a lot of credit for for after the Tolo tournament, after your name is MVP, after him and the rest of the Mexico youth squad not doing that well in the Central American games, for him to come back and have that first start of the season, score the two goals. That's uh, I think that's an important, important moment in his career. I think, I mean, and it's it wasn't just a couple of tap-ins here or there. I mean, it, you know, it was two good goals. I wasn't yeah. too sure if somebody deflected the first one. Like, I was trying to keep looking at it through angles, but it looked kind of a, a, a weird throw. But, I mean, he, was, he, he wasn't he was passing. He was going a goal. And then the second one, um, Oriya Peralta, like you said, does 60% of the, of, of the work. Tramples over somebody, goes forward. Typical Oribe Peralta passes it off. Sees line, uh, Linus there, and then the kid's not afraid to shoot it right in the corner. Yeah, and able to the golazo. So the kid's got skill. We've seen it now. You know he can he encara los jugadores like they say. You know on a one on one basis goes in and out. And um, not only is he taking on you know players that are younger, players that are older with the Toulon tournament. You you saying that they're 21, 22, but now professional league MX players. They're looking to him and good for him that, um, you know, we've started her- hearing his name uh, a year ago. We're starting to see what he's doing. Uh, now he's getting, you know, goals in Liga MX and we'll see where he's going to go. And it's, it's good to be excited for that. And when people say don't overhype him, no one's saying this is Messi. No one's saying this is yeah. Ronaldo. No one's saying get him to the L3. Uh, you know what I mean? Continue to or do not. what you got to do. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just uh, not right away. <laughs> All of a sudden the games right now, you call up Diego. I, I would say no, you know, get you know, to continue to see how, how, um, how he's doing and, and wait to, you know, uh, the season, take it, take it slow, but it's yeah, okay to be yeah. excited. I'm, I'm all right. I'll be excited to say this yeah. is the best player Mexico's ever had. That's overhyping. So no, but I think that America has been kind of wise seeing how they took, um, his career in the beginning. Cause after he was, jo- he joined the practice with Ricardo Lavolpe and he's, and he made his debut a, a year ago. It was in March of uh, last year. Um, they had no press conferences. He had no access whatsoever with reporters. It was impossible to talk to him. I think the first time yeah. he actually spoke was when they left on, in the airport for the Central American Games. That's when I, the first time I actually saw, saw him like speak freely. So I think they were really wise about keeping him away from the media because they, they've seen this happen. They saw what happened with Kubo. They saw what happened with Chofis. It gets to their heads. It's really too all too easy. So they just kept him away from everything and just try to keep him in check. Um, and I think that uh, that also allowed Miguel Herrera to say, hey, you're not going to be a starting position, not yet at least. And after these two goals, Miguel Herrera actually changed his, his mind and said, um, he, he said last week he doesn't like the U20 rule. He doesn't like to p- make players uh, have to play them uh, like forcibly. But then now he says, hey, this guy just convinced me. He, he shows he has talent and he's not playing because of the rule. He's playing because he's actually good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I like the way that they've taken him. And oddly enough, I think his brother scored last week. So maybe that was Model? the extra motivation. Model? Yeah. yeah. The other Model. liner. Yeah, he scored last week. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm generally excited to see. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying he should be called up for like the next friendlies, but I think... I think he needs to work his way up, and it sounds funny to say he needs to work his way up to the Gold Cup, but I think he does need to work his way up to the yeah. Gold Cup. I think that's 100 percent true. I want to see a good. I want to see a solid year. I'm not saying like a solid season because once again, it's funny to say a, fall, a solid season in Mexican soccer, but that's only six months, five months. Right? But so I want to see a full solid year uh, with him with America, and I want to see him building up little by little. Getting, getting that call up to the Gold Cup, thriving in the Gold Cup against competition that he could easily do well against. So I, I think that's the trajectory that I want to see him on. And maybe two years down the line, perhaps see him make a move abroad. I don't I don't think he should be making the move abroad just yet. I think his level is first division soccer in Mexico. And whether that be for a year, whether it be for two years, I think he still needs to stay here. Because you see people saying, I think I saw, I've seen a few people saying, it's like, oh, he should be going over to Europe now. I was like, no, don't. That, let, let's, let's, not, let's not rush that just yet. That's crazy. Let's see how he develops over the next several months. I'm not necessarily like against that, right? Um, because if he does get a good, I mean, this kids are going to Europe at 17, 18 years old too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't happen very often with Mexican players. I, I'm not saying go to Real Madrid or, but you know, a, a PSV, uh, or something yeah. in there where you come in, 
it wouldn't be a bad idea for him to go at, at that. Yeah, I guess I guess I, I wouldn't be bothered if he were to go to a Portuguese side or uh, Eredivisie side in the ne- next year or two. I would still be worried that maybe we're rushing it a little too much, but I wouldn't be that bothered by it. Yeah, I- I'm trying to remember. Do you guys remember how old uh, Joao Malik is? Santos he... player. He's also Mexican. He's Mexican born, so I'm he's not sure pretty... he's actually kind of around the same age. Um, maybe a bit older. That? I don't know. That's a good question, though. So I'm look guessing. It look it up yeah, on the we'll, pod. We'll, we'll Google it. I guess he's 21. <laughs> 20. Okay, let's Google maybe. it right. Now. Uh, he was born in '99, which means he is. Oh my goodness, he was born in '99. 19 years old. <laughs> 19 years old. Yeah. Yeah, so he's about the same age. So that's like the same generation. And we saw him going to Porto B. And I think actually he just got signed up to the second. I think it was the second team or something. I, th- I think he was in Porto C and now he's in Porto B or something or other. But that would be like the other way to go. Like, yeah, yeah. good player. He he was a leading goal scorer in the U twenty. So I don't know. We'll, we'll have both cases to see how they work out. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's okay to do to th- take that route or or stick and, and play a good year. I I wouldn't mind either. Right. Um. I kind of want to yeah. see him. Like I said, I wouldn't be like totally bad if somebody like Porto Bay came or even a small team and just look and just wants to snatch him and and, and have that opportunity. But I kind of want to see him every weekend um, and see what this kid does. So yeah. interesting enough, uh, America uh, at the beginning of the tournament, we've said injuries here, there, Piojo. I mean, not having the great starts now coming back. Uh, what do you guys say? You know, has Diego line has been a part of that? Of, or, you know, at least how positive, at least Las Aguilas kind of seem. Well, I think right now things do look more promising for them. Cecilio Dominguez is back. Uh, Linus is, I mean, after his return from the Central American Games, I mean, that's obviously that's good, like excellent news uh, for America. You still have, I think, uh, an intriguing back line there with Edson Alvarez and Paul Aguilar, obviously Marchesin and Nets and Oribe. I mean, I, I think that's something that we need to focus on too. Not only just the assist uh, for Linus' goal, but the the goal that he got, America's third goal in that match. I mean, it's just so, so crucial for Oribe to be scoring again because he is a leader within that side, and he is the team captain. I think he does a lot of work off the ball. I do uh, give him credit for doing that. But it was just so important for him to find the back of the net again because I think there are a lot of people who are criticizing him. I, mean, I think there's a lot of pressure for him uh, to score as well. So that was good to see for them. So I think with Oribe, if he continues to find the back every now and then, with Linus kind of like uh, getting his confidence up, but with Cecilio back too, I think things are going to work out quite well for America. Yeah, we still have Roger Martinez hoping to, uh, he'll step yeah. up a bit. And Oribe's goal was crucial because he tied last week his longest goalless streak. So I'm guessing the pressure was on him as well. And just the fact yeah. that he could get that third goal, despite already having the victory, I think it was crucial for him just to get, gain some confidence for next games and yeah. making, sure, making sure Piojo knows that he's available and that he can score some more goals for the rest of the season. Oh, we still can't hear you. Okay. Um, uh, Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was on mute. I'm all like, all right, talking. Um, <laughs> on, the, on the chat... Uh, we kind of just asked, you know, if there were other players. Um, Luis Martinez says, when I said, you know, why call him up to El Tri? Somebody said, good question. Why not? Expletive. Uh, Dam is <laughs> only half as good as yet he gets called up. Jurgen Dam is there. Why not? Diego Linus is what he's saying. Uh, Luis, take it easy, bro. Take it easy. Uh, Francisco says, Dam only got called up because of Osorio. True. Fra- Francisco Velasco from the Cholos podcast. Oh, that's right. It is Mr. Francisco Velasco. That's Francisco. Go, Francisco. A friend of the show and uh, there at Cholos giving us halftime tweets of what's happening during the halftime shows. It's, it's definitely I like his tweets coming from there. I, I, I think it's interesting that someone brought up Jurgen Dam because I think that's another big talking point going forward is that obviously Osorio is no longer in charge. So I wonder if certain players like a Jurgen Dam, and maybe you could even. Oh, like, yeah, like, uh, uh, whether they're no longer going to be relevant to the national team anymore because you're going to have someone else who's going to be in charge. And perhaps you're going to have other interesting people who have been overlooked. Maybe you're going to have someone like a Paul Like, or maybe, maybe potentially even have a Leos, although we do have a wealth of wingers right now. There's a lot of wingers that we have right now. So maybe, maybe Elias still won't get his chance. I feel bad for Elias. He's a fantastic player. But, uh, but it, it is going to be interesting to see which other players are going to be dropped, which other players will be given their, uh, some opportunities. Definitely. Continuing with the chat, 
the guy with name 23 says fuera Wiso. thank you thank you um <laughs> and uh luis carlos Cataño says i'd rather have linus in el tri than joani and they confirm jao is 19 years old uh so continue thank you so much for for joining us there no you're right you're right cesar especially on that talk um if another if another el tri coach comes up and which could be tuca all of a sudden right <laughs> and, that, and, and 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 calls up jurgen we'll be like okay well what we see there um <laughs> so interesting enough on where we're going all right uh next talking point liga mx toluca versus chivas uh referees a mess uh continuing that uh someone's always complaining about referees and now coaches <laughs> are doing it is there a problem adriana like do, do we really have a referee mess or is this just that happens in every league and everyone complains about the, the refs i think there's there's a huge referee crisis and yeah we just see it every weekend and it's not been the best um in the long like a long time in the league of mix i don't think we've had like really consistent refereeing here like probably in a couple of years so the thing that happened this weekend which, which by the way this is the second time that this happens at the nemesio diaz it's the second time that somehow the referee messes up um last time um toluca was playing monarcas monarca scored a goal it was offside and then toluca was just really quick about getting the ball going and they scored and then everyone was going a mess monarcas was mad as hell they couldn't believe what was going on so then the same thing tried to happen this this weekend with Chivas. They scored a goal. It was offside. And Alfredo Talavera just said, we're going to do this again. We're gonna, I'm going to get the ball and just kick it really quick. And then hopefully we'll score a goal uh, um, against Chivas. But then the referee stopped because they, they he, I'm pretty sure he remembered that. This was Cesar Arturo Ramos, by the way, who was, um, who was at the World Cup. <laughs> so then he was like, no, no, no. We're just going to take our time, put the ball wherever it, it needs to go, and then you're going you're gonna to kick the ball. Um, so Alfredo Talavera was really mad because he knew uh, what he was going to do. And then he just started um, back to the referee. He gives, gets a yellow card and then just gets the red card and everyone just starts screaming. And then after that, um, I think it was Orbelin Pineda had a really clear shot at the goal and he was just pulled back by Enrique Triverio. They start <laughs> fighting. So it was just like Lucha Libre meets Liga Mekis meets the, the, our usual refereeing. Yeah. So, or really, Pineda. Amazing, amazing enough, Ruben Sambuesa made like he he wasn't like red carded or something. I was amazed because that that's like your first choice when it comes to Toluca. But um, no, Orbelin I think was sent out, and then Alfredo Talavera was sent out, and he's gonna miss two matches for Liga MX because of what he said to the referee. You you know it's something crazy is going on when it's not even Sambuesa who's getting <laughs> called in the red. I know, right? I, mean, I, I was like, I'm sure. It. I saw someone pull Orbelin, and I was like, oh, my God, that has to be Rubens. And then I was like, oh, no, it's Triverio. Hey, Triverio, welcome back to Liga MX. Triverio, and then that's... everyone, they just, they ran. I've never seen Salcido run this quickly, like, in the last five years. He just ran. <laughs> there he, it is. I'm, I'm, he just, like, come. if you're watching the shot on the TV, he just, like, comes into the shot, and he's, like, screaming and putting his hands out. He's like, no, 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 he's trying to separate all the players. It was just, I don't know, wow. like really mad for a while. I was going to say, because I, I didn't get a chance to watch this game. I was like getting ready. So it's like halfway through the game, I like left for Tijuana. And I was looking at just like the highlights later. And I was like, what happened in this game? I was looking at all the yellows. I was looking at the replays. Again? And I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like everyone is like, because I would just look at the replays. Because, you know, you go on the League of Mikey's website. And you're like, oh, look, let's look at this red. And everyone's like, ah, like angry, like, all right, let's look at this other red. Ah. I was like, what happened in this game? Just because, I mean, you, you gave a perfect exa like, example of what happened right there, Adriana, but it just looked like everyone was just like incredibly angry with like everything that I was like it looking was at. It was so yeah. crazy. And the thing is, Chivas was winning at one point, which was amazing. Yeah. We were all shouting. We were all so happy. And you have um, Cardoso on the bench for Chivas. And you're like, yeah, Cardoso is going to beat them at the Nemesio 10. And then all of a sudden they they score and then it's offside and you're like oh no not again because she was was actually playing pretty well, and then Talavera I, I'm pretty sure he had like this flashback he's like we're gonna do the same thing against Morelia, he tried to get the kick out and then referee's like no 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 this is not happening to me hey and actually um the the, the, the Luca players were saying that um that the referee was in over his head he's like oh no no he couldn't like. Um, he's just coming in from the World Cup, and he thinks he's better than us and everything. Please. So th those were really harsh um, words after the game as well. So this is the guy that, oh, by the way, me. didn't didn't give a red card to Cristiano Ronaldo. But they're saying if you couldn't um, give a red card to Cristiano Ronaldo for something even like a lot worse, how could you give one to Alfredo Talavera? Yeah. I mean, it was a typical. I, I know, like you know, you can imagine Talavera just like yeah, yeah whatever. 
And then he was like, no, no, red card, you're out of the game. I, I yes. just like the fact that I kept re reviewing uh, when uh, Orbini Pineda gets his shirt dragon. He takes it off. He's like, here, you, you want it? Like, you can have it, yeah. <laughs> you can have it. And uh, it, it's, it, just, it just kind of boggles the mind how... It's again. We're not talking about the on the field stuff. It's everything off the field and almost you know two out of the three, the three uh, stories and tonight. But nevertheless, um, Chivas. Okay, on the football side of Chivas, Cesar, um, with you know everybody was hoping to see. Like I keep saying, I'm not a Chivas fan. With I, it's good when Mexico when 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 Chivas wins because of the players. But are we at least starting to see a little bit of hope? Mm, I don't know if you want to use the word hope. I want to. I didn't. I didn't watch this game, but just so much. But you saw. I don't know if hope is the word you want to use for that. But I still think, regardless of what happened in this game, I do think that Chivas is a side that's going to make progress from what we've seen last season. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. If they have a good run, maybe they'll maybe sneak into the top eight. But I wouldn't be surprised if they were to eventually. Uh, get more. I mean, what was it? they had three wins last season? So if they were to get more than three wins, uh, unfortunately, I was going to say that someone like Orbelin Pineda, as I think, is crucial to that growth. I think he's due for a good season, but he did get that direct red for slapping some Buesa. so <laughs> that's going to be a little, a little difficult for them in the next, the next match. But no, I, I, I think he, Chivas, man for man, it is still an interesting roster. I am still kind of interested to see how Van Ranking does back there. I think Goldinho, once again, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to watch this game, but I think from the what I've seen so far from Goldinho, I think he's kind of exceeded my expectations. Yeah. I think yeah. he's he's done quite well for them. Uh, Brizuela, like on the wing, hopefully he can continue to do well for them. I think he had an assist in that game. But uh, no, I, I think I think it's a team that's going to make progress from what they've done last season. They're not going to be title contenders. They're probably not going to make the playoffs, but I do anticipate that they're going to make progress. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually, uh, I, I saw the game and I was actually surprised when I saw Chivas. They were, put, I, I think it was usually just the first half, maybe, maybe 50, 60 minutes. They were, Toluca didn't know what to do. I think halftime was the best thing that could have happened to them uh, during the game. Chivas was surprisingly well, was playing surprisingly well. I was just um, amazed that um, Saldivar was playing really well. He got both goals. He hadn't scored in a really long while. Sandoval was about to make a really good goal as well, which just um, bounced on one of the one of the goalposts, and that's when Saldivar kicked it in. Um, Gudinho is uh, a good surprise, I think, from all the players that arrived mm -hmm. during the summer. I think, obviously, the best one. Um, it's good to know that you have someone that's that's strong um, in in the goalpost. Um, Orbelin is, is also good to see, except for that, yeah, that slap to Sambuesa. I think it was good to see him <laughs> as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. It's not a title contender. Chivas uh, probably won't make it to the Liguilla, but definitely um, I'm hoping for some improvement. There, there is potential. I, you do see some players come in like Godinez. Um, some, you have Beltran sometimes on the bench. So there, there is talent. It's just a matter of seeing if, it, if they have enough of it to be competitive during the rest of the season. And you do look at, I mean, not saying that they're going to make the playoffs, but you do look at that roster and you think that this is a side that could potentially finish maybe seventh. Maybe eighth place. I'm not saying they're going to do it, but I think if everyone is playing at their very best, uh, I, I think it would. I think I wouldn't be that surprised if they make the playoffs. I'm not saying that they're going to do it once again, but just man for man, that's a, that's a decent roster that they have there, and they should be once again just doing much more than just getting three three wins in a season. Well, I mean, it'd be interesting to see if they do because right now Pumas and Cruz Azul are on the top of the leaderboard. America doing well and. Chivas is. You got three out, three out of the four. Three out of the four. Yeah. The yeah. Decision, so. So that's. Uh, that's all good for Chivas now. Yes. <laughs> it would, like I said, it'd be good. If those, you know, the, the big teams, those grandes, are up there. I've already said Tigres is there too, and the only one was obviously with Pachuca and recently at the bottom of the league table. Uh, as far as the uh, the scores that happened over the weekend, um, Veracruz and Monarcas tied. Uh, Pumas finally got a win versus Atlas in Estadio Jalisco. If I'm not mistaken, this is Dude, Atlas was terrible in that game. I want like they just completely fell apart in that first half. They missed a penalty, allowed a goal, got a red. That was just an abysmal performance in the first half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> Congratulations well, yeah, Atlas missed um, in the first game. Um, Atlas faced Querétaro. Antiago Volpi, yeah, he ended any hopes of Atlas scoring. So he, yeah. Um, actually, Atlas fired their sports director on, over the weekend, which is, I think, oh. expected. Um, yeah, no, and yeah. I think I think Rafa Marquez is set to make a press conference tomorrow. So, Looks like Rafa is in already. Rafa. 
Yep. Rafa's already in. Uh, golazo de Pablo Barrera. Or uh, Pumas. Pablito. Made, Pablito. Made the... Uh, <laughs> made the... Uh, yes. I'm watching... Up and cover. <laughs> I, I, I was watching... Uh, where was I? I think... Oh, I, I went bowling on Saturday night. And uh, all of a sudden, the ESPN, you know how they have those TVs? Yeah. And I, I see ESPN, then number five. And I couldn't hear it, but I really wanted to hear what they were saying. I'm, <laughs> saying I'm like, are you serious? They just made it. So it's pretty cool. ESPN. Uh, and this is the, like sports. Now ESPN Deportes. Like, then they had something else, some of the basketball. Or, Keep on the, the youngsters, Efraín Juárez and uh, Pablo Barrera. <laughs> Pablo Barrera. It's going to be dope, guys. It's going to be dope. So Pumas con Anytime you ask one of the Pumas, like um, the sports director or something, you're like, when are you going to give a chance to all the players that you created, like your like youth level and something? They're like, oh, no, our entire team was like, 60% like youth le like players that came out from our youth levels and you're like no 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 you can't count Pablo Barrera that's not the same thing anymore hey they're smart about it hey really quick okay Pablo Barrera to El Tri like I know we people get up no no he's doing good no 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 we have four years we just have to like cut off all he's only 31 no, no, because like the thing is like you're not he gonna had his chance. Yeah, <laughs> you're not you're not gonna play him like an essential role and like in a more advanced like uh. role, like a more advanced role. We got what we got Herrera Barrado, we got in the wings, we got Tecatito, we got Chucky, we got. No, I, think was, that? I, think that? It, I think his injury, right? His injury after he went abroad. I think he got injured there, and he kind of not. I, hey man, guy keeps scoring. Guy keeps scoring. We can't just like knock him off. We saw Oribe at age thirty, whatever. So. You could be the well, player. that's because we need strikers. We need strikers, dude. We don't need oh, like. Oh, goals. Nah, dude. But he's not a striker, though. Like. <laughs> for, I think he scored for a three, like. No, he's like like a winger. No, no, no. Yeah, he's not a yeah, striker. Guys, there are no more strikers anymore. There, are, Chucky's a winger striker. Like it's. it's <laughs> so it is. All right, um, Nakaksa Lobos, another red card. Um, <laughs> that game Nakaksa pulled off. That was a, a terrible, terrible game, game, by the way. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Terrible game. Uh, we saw Pachuca versus Club, uh, Club América. We saw Cruz Azul and Tigres 1-0. Oh, um, Monterrey. And Late game winner. Monterrey. Again, continuing to see how uh, it, it, Liga MX, you think that a team is going to do well and then they surprise you. 2-1. Uh, we talked about the Toluca and Guadalajara madness with two red cards. How many red cards are there? Four red cards? Five red cards, I think. One, two, three, four, five. I think it was six, actually, because there was two... Wait, wait, no, 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 not six. Well, I'm, I'm, no, one, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Tijuana, Toluca, Guadalajara, Atlas, Necaxa, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking up at this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think MX actually tells us on Monday, so let me. Five. Yeah, it's five reds. Five reds. <laughs> five reds. Uh, Santos getting the win over Puebla. And uh, the game yeah. of the, uh, on, on the night uh, here uh, with a lot of Liga MX uh, journals calling it a rivalry, um, Leon, yeah. Club Tijuana. Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah, no, no. It's, it's not a rivalry? No, it's not a rivalry. People it's, a, it's, it's a building why, rivalry. Why is that a rivalry? No, it isn't a rivalry. Because it's one that started in the second <laughs> division. I, but, I mean, because like, back when Leon was like doing really well in the second division, okay. like Cholo stopped them from going well, up. And I'll then go like, with the hype. So, so, they, so you inherited the, the, the rivalry. Uh, like it's the been so boring. Like, there's a lot of Cholo's <laughs> people that would be like, hey, there's a big rivalry. And I'm like, okay, it's a good game. I'm not saying it's a big rivalry. I'm saying that it, it, it is, it is, it is a, there's a lot of animosity between the two teams. <laughs> but I think, but I think and there's a lot of animosity them. between the two. But I think it's just Charlo's fans because I really uh, have ask, my own fans. Ask, 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 ask Caddy. Caddy said that, that she thinks that it's it's a it's a rivalry. I did so. ask Caddy. We had a conversation about this. Uh, like, well, she, she's <laughs> lying to one of us, Caddy. You're in the uh, chat. Caddy. Confirm it. Caddy. <laughs> we had a chat on Tuesday. Anyway, no, it's funny. It's, it's I think I think it's funny because every time Ch Leon comes out, it was like, oh, Leon versus shows. I'm like. I mean, eat a bottle. So, what like would this classical be called? If, it, if this were no, a classical, what what it would? You you need a name. It has to be like the like no, the no, it wouldn't be a, it would be like a yeah, rival. National... Actually, Francisco and I, Francisco and I, we've we've been uh, we were actually talking about that in like a show's podcast. I think we thought that like the classical essential like might be like as, as like they they didn't have a history of a lot of rivalry. Yeah, I think a classical essential is like as I mean, I think you have something called the classical Colvin, whatever. Like, like I think you have a classical like essential, like <laughs> the classical yeah. nuevo. 
Clásico Nuevo. We have no. Derby Poblano now. We have Derby Lobos Poblano. versus Puebla. So we like making these things up as well. So yeah. yeah. Leon, Leon has a Clásico already. Is it the Clásico del Bajío versus uh, Irapuato, if I remember yeah. correctly. <laughs> anyway, it's funny. That's, that's it's funny because... Lost. <laughs> yeah, it is lost. It's kind of... It's funny because yeah. when um, I think uh, of several of, uh, of you know, Cholos play. I, th I think Cholos really wanted to be a rivalry. And I'm just like, eh, okay, cool. But... But, I think it's, 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 but it's not even what. Like, people do think it's a rivalry out in, like, the Iquano region. Like, people... Like Tijuana Diego, like, does, Tijuana yeah, yeah. does, but I, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, it's funny how how that kind of just started. Anyway, uh, interesting game <laughs> with a penalty kick. Uh, what's up with penales being missed lately in Liga MX? Um, but uh, Cesar, you were there, and yeah. Cesar always goes to Cholos game, but this is one of the first times he is it the first time you went as a fan? You actually had fun? No, I, I went back in 2016 too, but it was the first time since 2016 that I went to Liga Mikey's game as a fan. It was fantastic. I forgot that you can or you're allowed to have fun at soccer games. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a bunch of beers, I had tacos. Our good friend uh, Amy Lopez, slash uh, member of the Mexican soccer show, she tagged along as well. So it was good. It was a lot of fun actually. I had a fantastic time. Actually, like because there's certain things like we were talking about not to get into it too much, but like I don't know I I'm always in the press box, just like sitting yeah. up there, and I, I never get to sit next to like La Masacre, which is a supporters group. I never get to go out and like have some beers, like walk around. So it was it was fantastic just to have the fan experience. I got to do this more often, to be honest. So if anyone wants to visit me in San Diego, you want to go down as a fan to show this game, drop on by. I told no. you, we so I told you, we so let's do I it. Man. I know, yeah, I definitely want to go to that. And you know what? I always wanted to go to the Leon game, and it's like, and I'm like, oh, man, that's... that's and crazy. you would have left, you like, you know what, Cesar? This is a rivalry. And I'm like, yeah. that's right, we still, yeah. 100%. Maybe that's why, that's why I, I need to go. Um, Amy uh, Amy went over, and she was also there. She was. Uh, she sent me some cool cool pictures of, of, of it going. If you have a chance to go to San Diego, go to a Cholos game. Liga MX is yeah. right there. So, And if you have a chance to visit San Diego, I know San Diego is awesome. Make a way over. Uh, hop, skip, and a jump over to uh, Tijuana, and you're there. Um, so I think that's really cool. And a, a really cool um, scene that's happening there with San Diego and all the people that follow uh, Cholos. So I, I, the more it grows, is the better. So that's yeah. They said yeah, really quickly a couple of things on Cholos. They said I think like thirty to thirty-five percent of the fans who go to Cholos games uh, are from the U.S. That's so awesome. there is like, there is like a strong, yeah, strong, cool. strong, strong, strong like U.S. kind of. You can kind of see we've all talked about but like. Uh, you can kind of see like people having like kind of like tailgating uh, in the parking lot outside. Um, you can see that a lot too. Just like you will see like a lot of American fans hanging out. They are gonna they're expanding the stadium too, so you could probably see a lot more American fans come through. So it, it's interesting. It's kind of cool. Cool. Um, but as far as that game, Leon, oh, you know, ten men they couldn't even. Like I said, I tweeted out if Le if Leon can play against ten men every week, then we might make it to the Liga. <laughs> but um, we'll we'll see where that goes. All right. Um. Liga MX continues Lego on uh, obviously next weekend, and we'll see. Uh, we'll... Puebla Veracruz, Monarca Necaxa, Lobos versus Atlas. There should be a game. Uh, Leon Querétaro, Tigres Toluca, Club América Monterrey, Pumas Ooh, Pachuca, oh my God. Yeah. Santos, Club Tijuana, Cruz Azul. I'm going to have to go with Club América Monterrey, right? As a game of the week. Uh, I mean, that's not. I mean, you. Pumas Pachuca. Oh, Tigres Toluca sounds pretty good as well. Yeah, I'm still not ruling out Pachuca being a bad team, even though they have what they're at the very bottom right now. Yeah, they're at the very bottom. I still think I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they're kind of like step up. Well, yeah. You know, what's interesting is that one goal, one. <laughs> <laughs> I still wouldn't be surprised. I, I, have, I think they have an interesting roster. Yeah. Um, Leon finally scored. I was thinking about one goal. I was like, oh, finally they scored the season. But uh, <laughs> if we're looking at all of them, I mean, you see, you see, Club, Club, uh, Club Tijuana and Cruz Azul. I think it's going to be a good game. See what, what Cruz Azul can keep on doing. Guadalajara and Santos. Santos off the win. Guadalajara still not getting that win. So you got your Pumas, Pachuca, Pachuca last. Pumas uh, doing great. Club América Monterrey, Tigres, Tigres Toluca. Then you get in the snot. So I mean, Leon Querétaro. Uh, <laughs> Lobos versus Atlas. We'll I, might, I, might, I might skip Lobos for oh. Atlas, not going to lie. <laughs> Puebla, Veracruz, and Monarca Nagaxa, but it should be interesting. At least. Um, by the way, Pumas is switching its home game schedule for two games. This is one of them. They're playing at 4 o'clock. They usually play at noon, which is killer what? for all the teams. Uh, and they're playing at 4, so let's see how that goes. We usually don't see Pumas at a different like, schedule home games. I think I saw games. Pumas a while back in the night. It was weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Weird. So, yeah. So now, so now, I don't know. Maybe Pachuca has something to take out of the, that situation because usually Pumas is used to that heat, and yeah. like whatever visiting team it comes isn't, unless it's yeah. like Toluca. 
nah. th- which also plays at noon. But um, yeah, so that might be interesting. You always see, like, see the, that the, the, the no shade, no sombras, always when you see Pumas, you know, you're watching a Pumas game because there's no shade at all with the players. I know. <laughs> You, you can tell when people went to a Pumas game because they're like red, like over here, and, like, <laughs> like, 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 arms and everywhere. Oh, you're like, oh, you went to the Pumas game, right? Oh, yeah. Estadio Universitario right there. I'm like warming All up right. as it is in like San Diego. It's like almost eight o'clock and I'm like sweating with my no AC in this room. So I can only imagine like people going to like Pumas games at those hours. It was, 100, it was 117 in Phoenix today. <laughs> oh, my God, okay. dude. Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> Really quick, oh man, it's almost already time to close. Uh, really quick on Ochoa, um, not confirmed. A lot of people are saying that it's ready to go with Napoli. There's still something that's going on. Adriana, what's going on with the loans and buys from um, from Standard League? Well, Standard wants to sell Ochoa. Napoli made an offer. Um, they only wanted to him on loan. So they're still trying to work that out in case um, they can. Uh, Standard as well wants to play at the pre-Champions League match, which they have tomorrow with Ochoa. They want to have at least that game with him, and then le- next week when it's the second leg of the uh, of the of the series, um, they just he might not just be available. But um, apparently that's what's holding up this operation. That Napoli made an offer, he's on loan, um, and Standard still has to make. Um, they they want to sell him because Ochoa still has a year left in his contract. So if they want to mm-hmm. sell him, they have to do it now. So that's mm-hmm. why. So they're still working that thing out. I think it might turn out well for Ochoa. Hopefully it will. It will be great to see him finally in a really good team in Europe. Yeah, and as I mentioned on Twitter too, even if he, uh, I did this earlier today, that the, even if he were to play in that Champions League qualifier, he would still be allowed to take part in the Champions League with Napoli because as long as you don't, as long as you do a qualifier, first round, second round, third round, as long as you don't take part in the group stage with a different team, they are allowed to do that. So he'll be. So yeah. Ochoa could can take part. In that even if it were to be the full series against Ajax for whatever reason, and then he could still play in the Champions League group stage with Napoli. Yeah, question I had great. Yeah, actually, that, that was a rule change, actually, and he would be one of the first yeah. players to actually take advantage of it, so that would be pretty cool. Actually, didn't Chicharito do that, right? With, uh, yeah. with Bayer Leverkusen? I thought he did that. Because he did some sort of... Uh, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know. Anywho, I forget. I forget. Uh, this just in, it looks like Kameni is also going to go to Napoli. Carlos Kameni. Oh, no. no his, old, his old foe. <laughs> his old foe. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think that was, was a nightmare. That was Adriana's like, are you serious? What is Carlos Kameni doing nowadays? Yeah, I was like, oh, no. Uh, Carlos Kameni. They have, like, I think th- the problem with Napoli is I think they have like three really, really young uh, goalkeepers at like 20, 21. Oh, They're like, no, man. I need some of sprints. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Carlos Kameni comes they in, have a takes couple his of older spot. Goalkeepers. <laughs> Takes his spot. Yeah, no. um, over the weekend, also preseason gains. Uh, Raul Jimenez scored. By the way, they didn't give him the penalty kick. Somebody needs to let Wolves know that Raul has never missed a penalty kick on official. He games. actually he he missed a penalty in a what? friendly. He missed a penalty in a friendly for Wolves. That was a fr- yeah. That streak of yeah. lost. Perf- his his That's no it. way. Yeah, his first. Yeah, it his was first, it was friendly. His first. It was actually it it, it would have been his first goal with Wolves. So and he missed yeah. it. Where was I? It was it was a fr- it was like a weird like friendly. It was actually I didn't even know about it until I read it in some articles. Like why hasn't anybody been like freaking out about this? I probably should have said a tweet out <laughs> wait, about it. Wait but, a like, second. Was this an official game? Let's just imagine it was a fr- happened and just an official game. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding, guys. It never happened. <laughs> never happened. But yeah, he did. Uh, but he did miss, miss a penalty, but it was during a friendly. It was like his first friendly with the team. I think. Ah, uh, doesn't count. <laughs> maybe, you know what, maybe, they didn't, maybe they didn't give him this one because there, there was a penalty kick and uh, Raul didn't take it. Anyways, he did score. Very good game. Um, Chicharito scored also over the weekend preseason. And then also Mr. Tecatito, um, who loves to take off his shirt after a goal. It's like, dude, you can't do that anymore. Um, yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, also scored. We'll see there. Uh, season starts next week. For, well, uh, actually, tech, well, yeah. well, Standard Leash already started. Porto, they did their Super Cup. PSV did their mm-hmm. Super Cup. Uh, EPL starts this week. This, this weekend, yeah. This week, this week, as well as PSV faces Utrecht. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but yeah. So we'll see some tricky activity. As... A broad arc. Also, yeah. really quickly about Ochoa, I posted this on Twitter too, but I think he was unhappy with the short amount of break that he had after the World Cup because he retweeted some posts. Uh, where it said like some sort of like players union found out that 15 players got less than a two week break after the World Cup before they had to start their season because Standard Leagues they've already played like two league matches already. So I think Ochoa is pretty unhappy right now with the lack of a break he got after the World Cup. It was kind of interesting. Man, he, 
he's going to Napoli. Just like, I, like, I love you, Ochoa. I, I yeah. love you. You, you. you know, you deserve that. But this is like, you've never had a break to go to a really good team. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's a good league. Eh, all right. But you know what? We don't know. I mean, I mean, he, he's... Um, last but not least, women's uh, Sub-20. Uh, the World Cup is going on right now uh, in a group stage from Mexico versus Brazil. The first game of group... Uh, Mexico is ever to be three, two. The ladies, Adriana. Um, why is no one talking about this? This is sub twenty. If it was a big deal, I know, right? Yeah, especially after the Central American games, all the players came back and said, "Hey, we just proved that we deserve more attention from the media." So, mm -hmm. hopefully, people will, will start to look. I, I think the the time difference isn't really helping too much because mm -hmm. the game was at six thirty a.m. here in, in Mexico. But um, still, a pretty good um, start for the U20 World Cup in France. Mexico beat uh, Brazil 3-2. to two. They were losing 2-1, to one, and then they came back um, for the 3-2 to two win. Um, they're, they're, play, uh, they're facing North Korea on Wednesday. I, I hope that's a, a better time than the one, one on Sunday. And then they close the, uh, the group phase against England. So no piece of cake there for, for the three U20. Um, they, it's the first time they beat Brazil in the competition this level with the U20 team. So that was pretty good. And in case they want to beat whatever their, their best uh, performance before, they have to make it to the semifinals. They made it to quarterfinals last time. So hopefully they'll make it to semifinals now with all the hype around the Liga Mekis Femenil as well. And it's good to see. I think I looked at the roster. I think 11 of the girls, uh, play for Liga Mekis Femenil teams. So that's always fantastic to see. That's all like very, very good news. It's very good news for the league as well. And it's even better news for the league when you have them beating Brazil. Obviously, they still have to take on North Korea. And also, it's kind of funny. People like might laugh at the idea of North Korea. But North Korea, I think they're the current champions of the U-20 Women's World Cup. I think they're the current title holders. So I don't yeah. think that, that's the side to be taken lightly. And then after that, Mexico still has to play England. So yeah. it's, it's going to be it's gonna be a tough road ahead for them. But, man, that, that win against Brazil, that's a that's a huge one. And that's a that's a big win for Liga Mekis Femenil, too. They got England, Mexico. Yeah, Brazil had a... Sorry, you go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, just just kind of wrapping wrapping up. Um, North Korea, Brazil, Mexico, and England in the group. Uh, you know, as far as football countries, you say North Korea was defending champions. England was able to beat North Korea. Now Brazil and Mexico, obviously Brazilians in any any sport of in soccer in any age is is somebody to reckon with. So it's great to see that we have. I'll be interested to see what happens against North Korea. And uh, just as a uh, as what's happening in U twenty, uh, the U S lost in that on that category. Oh, it's good to see that. Yeah, against Japan. So, against Japan. So, um, I think it's going to be a very interesting, very interesting, um, where that's going to, you know, where that's going to go, especially the qualifiers that are coming up over in the fall. Yeah, and then we'll see uh, how they do. Like, if say Mexico does make it to the next groups, uh, not groups, group stage, but to the knockout round, I think they'll be facing someone from Group A, rather be France, Netherlands, New Zealand or Ghana. So keep an eye on those sides as well, because if Mexico does make it to the quarterfinal stage, they might be playing one of those teams. Awesome. So U20s in France, and then next year the Women's World Cup is also in France. Yeah. It's also in France. Yeah. Nice. nice, nice. We'll see that. We're going to see them a lot of them. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, we went a little bit over on the show, but thank you so much for joining us. Special thanks to everyone listening to us on iTunes, getting to that 2,000 listeners a week. I think it's awesome. Thank you so much for uh taking the time to spend with us uh, i want to thank obviously adriana there in mexico city um and also mr cesar hernandez there in san diego tijuana area for those that have been asking about donde esta you know tom marshall where is he he's been taking a long uh, vacation we fired him we what said, you know what we're, just, we're, done. we're done with this guy <laughs> no no he uh he should be back next week uh in fact i got a text that says he's back next week um uh, so uh mr tom marshall will be back and uh we'll obviously we'll continue to to have fun here in the mexican soccer show with all of you bringing in new faces and uh continuing what is the drama of uh todo lo que es la fmf and we'll see who uh mexico will name as its coach which we've been down this road before how many coaches at the mexican soccer show talked about uh because we've had this member with before the juan carlos osorio and all that so yeah, uh, we're getting old we're getting old here at the mexicans total 42 i believe 43 yeah. 44 <laughs> 42 yeah all right going, going. thank you so much to cari chewy francisco velasco there at, uh uh that's on there and uh tommy lee on the, the fan the predictions chat. oh that's right the fan prediction i totally didn't look at that sorry, sorry. everyone who's annihilating us the predictions right now 
and All Liga right. MX prediction. If, if you don't know about this, uh, we had a Quinela last year, and it was you know any anyone in the Mexican soccer show. So we had this great idea of hey, why not involve the fans to see how they're going to do? I'm like, eh, this call just going to be, you know, <laughs> you know, and we'll see how they do. But uh, every Wednesday or Thursday, I think Thursday, we tweet out on a poll who's going to win, and you guys, the fans, uh, just pick. You know, for example, America. Um, America play right now. Oh, uh, America Tigres, you know, people chose America, and uh, all you have to do is one or the other. You don't have to put a score in. You guys have been winning, so I just got to throw it out there. I think 15 points is what... Uh, oh, they're, they're winning for now. For now. We'll see until I, I make... Out there. Let's see. The good we'll thing see until is... Make my comeback. If it's America and Chivas, <laughs> you guys are always... The fans always pick America and Chivas, so at least we're safe there. Yeah. But everything else... Predicting for now, our butts. they're kicking our butts. So, uh, in second place, uh, Adriana Terrazas is in second place. So, Adriana, good job. And then, are we tied up, Cesar? I think we both have 13, right? 13. So, let's see, yeah, right here. So, 16, Adriana, 15. Um, and then Cesar and I with 13. Then you have Amy with 11 and uh, Tom with 11. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Tom's missing out, he's in. He might he might get relegated. We'll see what happens. Oh, we'll get relegated. <laughs> Bring somebody up here. All right, amigos. Thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you so much for joining us on the pod. We'll see you guys next week. I know we've already went over time, and we have some crazy weird sound that's coming out of somebody's mic. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, going on. I think she's been playing with it. She was playing with it early today. Too. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Nos vemos hasta la próxima. This has been another edition of Mexican Sock Shows Monday Night Football.